Hi, welcome back. So in this video, we're going to talk through solving trigonometric equations, and we're going to be doing just some beginning examples, which are really like the most straightforward, simple examples that we have in this category of question. So, so far we have been simplifying expressions that look something like sine inverse of one half, or maybe a composition, so cosine of arctangent of one, or tangent of sine inverse of square root of three over two. Basically, we've been doing expressions. So we have a trig function or an inverse trig function and we're just simplifying it. So now we're going to start solving equations where we have solutions like x equals something or theta equals something. So we're upgrading from expressions to equations. And the idea here is that an equation is going to have an equal sign whereas an expression is a standalone object. So an equation might be something like sine of x equals zero, and we would solve for x, versus an expression would be sine inverse of zero. That doesn't have an equal sign, we would just simplify that. So that's just to give you a little context about what makes this different, this new topic, and it's that we're doing equations which have equal signs versus just simplifying expressions. So we'll be solving equations in this video. So I'm going to go through some examples and then at the end of the video, I'll provide a summary of the steps that we tend to do with these types of problems. So for our first example, let's solve cosine of theta equals one half for all possible values of theta. So here we have an equation, it's cosine of theta equals one half. And this statement is basically asking what angles have a cosine value of one half? So what theta values make this statement, cosine of theta equals one half, true? So what theta can we input and have this be a true statement? So let's just talk through this really quick. I'm gonna put the graph up here of cosine and a unit circle. So cosine on the unit circle is the x component, and we also have the graph. And we're looking for where it's equal to one half. So on the graph, I can draw a line at y equals one half and look at all of the places the graph intersects this line. So we see that there are many places where there are theta input values that output one half. Similarly, on the unit circle, I can see a value at pi over three that has a cosine of one half, and then at five pi over three also has a cosine of one half. So because the cosine is periodic, meaning that it repeats itself, we're going to have an infinite number of solutions because the graph continues on and on, and we're always going to have more places where the outputs are one half. And similar with the unit circle, we can just continue to spin around, adding two pi each revolution and get more and more answers. We can go backward even to get the negative solutions too. So what's sort of unique about these types of equations is that we have infinite options for solutions, theta, that correspond with a value that we're looking for. So here we have an infinite number of answers that correspond to one half as the output for cosine. So of course we can't write an infinite amount of things, we'd literally be here forever. And so we're going to need to come up with some ways to write infinite things in a simple and short way. So in order to help us do this, we're going to first find the solutions for the unit circle or from zero to two pi. So just looking at some of the solutions, we're gonna start there and then we'll expand to accommodate for the infinite solutions. So remember, we're trying to solve cosine of theta equals one half. And one way we're gonna do this is to utilize the inverse. So we can write this as its inverse, arc cosine of one half equals theta. Now, we've learned how to do this already, at least in this sequence of videos, and so this inverse function is going to give us one answer. However, it's only going to give us one of the answers, so we're going to need to do a little more work, but this will give us one answer, and I like to focus on this because you can just type this in a calculator if you really get desperate. I like to go through the conceptual work, of course, but you can type this in a calculator and get the answer. So on the unit circle, we see that one half for our cosine is pi over three. And so our cosine of one half is going to be pi over three. Remember our cosine is in quadrants one and two. So one half is a positive value. So we're looking at quadrant one and we're choosing that pi over three. Then our second answer, we're just going to find by looking at the unit circle. And I see that five pi over three is the other location. So in our interval from zero to two pi, so just one time through the unit circle, we have two answers. 
we have pi over 3 and 5 pi over 3. We could of course keep going around the circle to get more solutions. So we could start with pi over 3 and go 2 pi more and get pi over 3 plus 2 pi and we could repeat this and add 2 pi more. Similarly, with 5 pi over 3, we could add 2 pi to get another solution, and then add 2 pi again to get another solution, and so on. So this is where our infinite solutions come up. We have our two starting values, pi over 3 and 5 pi over 3, and we can just continually add 2 pi to get to those next solutions. Specifically, 2 pi is the period of our function cosine. So to get our final answers, we're going to add the period of cosine to each of our theta solutions. So we have pi over 3 plus 2 pi plus 2 pi, etc. And we have 5 pi over 3 plus 2 pi plus 2 pi, etc. And the way we're going to write this is as pi over 3 plus 2 pi times k. So that is some multiple of 2 pi. Similarly, we have 5 pi over 3 plus 2 pi times k. So some multiple of 2 pi. And here, k is any integer, which if you're not sure what an integer is, it's basically any positive or negative whole number. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, etc. Or negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, etc. Instead of writing out k is any integer, we have this fancy math statement that we sometimes write. I just like to show it because you might see it in other places and I tend to use this. So we use k in z. So that middle sign there that looks sort of like an e, that's an in symbol, it means that it's part of. And then the z with the double lines is a math way to write integers. So that z represents integers. You can also just write k as any integer if you want. And you don't even really have to use k, it's just the one I pick. So, okay. And so what this is doing is it's accommodating for all of the possible solutions that are 2 pi away from our starting point. So we start at pi over 3, we add 2 pi, we continue to do that in either direction, or we start at 5 pi over 3, and we do the same thing. So all right, we could write our final statement, and we say the solutions to the equation cosine of theta equals 1 half, or theta equals pi over 3 plus 2 pi k, and theta equals 5 pi over 3 plus 2 pi k, where k is an integer. k is in z. Now I know I wrote a lot out here, but this is going to become a lot faster and easier as we continue to do more examples. So let's do one more and look at it again, and hopefully the process can be a little more streamlined as we keep trying this. All right, for our second example, let's solve tangent of beta equals negative one for all values of beta. So this symbol here is the Greek letter beta, and it's specifically a lowercase beta. I'm trying to just introduce slowly some different Greek letters that we often see in math. So what we're going to do to solve this is we're first going to find the solutions in the interval from 0 to 2 pi. So since there are infinite solutions here, because we're looking for all values of beta, we're going to need to do this infinite thing again with the k and k being any integer, but we'll start by just finding the first solutions in the unit circle from 0 to 2 pi. So our equation says tangent of beta equals negative 1, and we can use the inverse tangent function in order to find one of our solutions. So we could say arctan of negative 1 equals beta, and this provides our first solution. Again, I'm doing this because you could put this in the calculator if you want. I'm going to show you how to do this by hand. So on our unit circle, tangent is y over x, which is the sine over cosine, or we could draw out our triangle. So I know in order to get negative one, that's a negative value, so I'm going to be in quadrant four for arctangent. Remember, arctangent can be quadrant one or quadrant four, so the negative means quadrant four. With my triangle in quadrant four, I know that negative one corresponds to this pi over four triangle, where the opposite side is negative square root of two, and the adjacent side is square root of two. So tangent here would be opposite over adjacent, which is negative square root of two over square root of two, or negative one. Similarly, on the unit circle, if we look at this angle seven pi over four, we can imagine that we do the y divided by the x, and we get negative one. 
So all of this to say we get our first solution and it's this seven pi over four, which we could also write as negative pi over four, but I'm gonna take the positive version, seven pi over four. Now we can look directly across from this and see the second solution. So at three pi over four, we have a similar scenario. When we do y divided by x, we'll still get the negative one. So our second solution here is three pi over four. So here we have beta equals three pi over four and beta equals seven pi over four. But something interesting is happening here. If we start at three pi over four, we only need to go pi to get to the next answer. In the previous version, we needed to go two pi, but here we just go by pi. Then we do pi more to get back where we started and etc. We continue to add pi each time. This is because the period of tangent is pi. So to get our final answers, we're going to add this period of tangent, which is pi, to each of our answers beta. So we'll say beta equals three pi over four plus pi times k, or beta equals seven pi over four plus pi times k. And normally we would be done, but something weird happens here with tangent. These are actually equivalent answers. Since if we look at one for k, or we just add one pi, we're going to get to the second answer. So if we start at three pi over four and go pi extra, we get to seven pi over four. So this is sort of redundant. We're writing the same thing twice, and we only need to pick one of these. This will be true anytime we do something with tangent, that there's going to be only one solution. So you can choose which one you like. I'm just gonna choose the first one. Beta equals three pi over four plus pi k. What this means is that when you're comparing your solutions to either an answer key or someone else's work, they might look a little different. So if you choose the other angle as your starting point, it's going to look slightly different. But the idea is that these are equivalent because of this plus pi k. So as our final statement, the solutions to the equation tangent of beta equals negative one are beta equals three pi over four plus pi k, and that is where k is an integer. So all right, let's summarize this process, and please trust me that as we continue to do more examples, this will become more straightforward. So our first step here was to find the answers in the interval from zero to two pi, either using a unit circle or the reference triangles. We can use the inverse to help us find one of the solutions, but we're going to need to do some reasoning in order to find the second, so you might as well look at a unit circle to start or the reference triangles. Here our reference triangles correspond to the 45, 45, 90 triangle, which is the pi over four triangle, or the 30, 60, 90 triangle, which is pi over six and pi over three. Then once we have those first solutions, the next step is to add the period of the function we're working with to the answers that we found. So if we're working with sine or cosine, that has a period of two pi, whereas tangent has a period of pi. And so tangent requires only one solution. All right, so that's an introduction to how to solve trigonometric equations. We will continue this in the next video. That's it for this one. Thanks so much for watching, and I will talk to you in the next one.